and grow YouTube show. I love working our way through your common, common rubber plant questions and having this be a living resource for people. So let's start with, I'm just going to, I will ask you, go through this list with you. So the first question, why is my rubber plant not growing? Light. Yeah. (laughs) Plain and simple light. Yeah. So I've had a lot of readers comment on my, on my blog, send me messages on Instagram. My plant's not growing. And literally after several months, they're still not growing. And then when I ask them, you know, where do you have your plant? How far is it from a window? What exposure is it? Oftentimes, you know, it's on the other end of the, uh, of, of the room from where the window is move your plant light bar none, the top, the top reason why. Mm. So, and, and like I said, you can't overdo, you really can't overdo light. It would be so difficult to overdo the light indoors um, for, for this plant as, as well. Um, I, I do have to say, well, we'll, we'll get to this later. Um, I'm just getting excited to think of thinking about all the questions that, that people have asked about this plant. Um, you mentioned fertilizer. So if your plant's not growing and you have it in a dark corner, don't think that fertilizer is going to help. It might actually be doing more harm than good. So for, think of fertilizer as an additional thing that you, you should be doing with your houseplant care routine after everything else is taken care of, after your plant's in good light, you're watering properly, your plant's growing, and then you can supplement with your fertilizer to, to make it grow even bigger and faster. But it right. should not be used as a fix because your plant's not growing. Light is the number one reason why your plant's not growing. So if it's in light, but you haven't changed the soil or fertilized ever. That's when it's time to try with the fertilizer. Cause there's so many, there's such a hurdle. I think I remember going through this, not fertilizing your plants and then because fertilizer, can be so intimidating. Uh, so, you know, I've talked to people who've never fertilized their plants and they've had plants for five years. And at that point it's like, okay, well maybe you want to just put a little fertilizer in there just to replenish that soil. Yes. Um, Okay, how do I get my plant to branch and become bushier instead of tall? That is a very, very, very common question. So there, there's actually more than one way to accomplish that. So oftentimes, you know, if you have, if you buy your, you know, rubber plant in, a, in one, one stem um, or one trunk, if you will, and it'll continue to grow, grow tall and not branch out. So there's, there's a couple things you can do. One, and this scares so many people, but you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be scared. If you've been living with your plant for a while and it looks good, don't be afraid to do this, is to prune it. Just hack it off. Hack it off wherever you want. You know, don't hack it all the way down to the, to the soil, to the pot, but you know, chop off a, a good portion of it and that will force some new branches to, to start forming. So that's one, that's one option. There's another option actually that's, I guess you can call it a little bit more advanced. Um, it's, you can propagate and then chop it off and then create a bushier, a bushier plant. So if you've ever, I don't know if you've ever tried air layering a plant. So mm-hmm. it is a great, it's a great method for very woody plants like rubber plants tend to get to, you know, so that you're not stressing out the cutting um, at, you know, if, if you take, if you take a big, let's say, if you just prune off a big branch on your rubber plant and it's, it has a big woody stem on it, that, that cutting is going to be stressed. So if, if you use a process like air layering, what you're doing is you're allowing roots to form while it's still on the plant. And then once it's rooted, then you can cut it off. So that's another option too. Can you give um, but, a quick breakdown of what air layering is? You don't need yes. to do a tutorial, but just for people yeah. who've never heard of it before. Absolutely. So what you're, what you're basically gonna do is take a sharp knife and you're going to make a cut on a diagonal into your rubber plant trunk. And you're gonna go about halfway. So right about, right, you know, right about halfway through. And then at that point, then you're going to take moist sphagnum moss and you're basically gonna shove it in where, where you cut it, just to prop it open a little bit. Um, and then you're gonna wrap the, that entire area around the stem, around the, the branch. And then 
you can take you know saran wrap or plastic wrap and wrap it around it and then tie it on both ends. And so over, over the course of a few months, then it's going to actually send out roots from where you cut it. And then you, the reason you wanna use a clear plastic wrap is that you can actually see the roots once they start growing. And then at that point, then you can just cut it off right under, right under you know, where you, you conducted the air layering and then you can pot it up. And then after that, then you've you know, essentially pruned that part off and then your original plant then that'll spur the extra side branches to, to form as well. So you can kind of conquer, do two things at once. You can branch off your original plant and then also propagate it at the same time. I love that. Yeah, because pruning off that top, hacking off that top is going to instigate more growth. And then you can root it. That's how I turned many four inch plants into eight or 10 inch plants um, <laughs> by rooting and re repopping. So that brings us to another one of your follower questions is propagation. What are the best ways to propagate a rubber plant? So do you recommend air, la air layering as your number one? Yeah, so that's definitely, there are more. So that's number one. And like I said, that works best if, if you have a really woody plant, if the branches are very woody, and, and you wanna propagate. So that, that will work the best, although the con is that it's much slower. So it will take a few months. Um, and I, I do have to say, propagation will also work the best during the active growing season. So if you're doing it in the middle of winter, that may not be the best, the best time to do it. It's not to say that you can't propagate year round, you absolutely can, but you might have a slower, um, you, you might have less of a success rate and it'll be substantially slower if you're not doing it in the spring or summertime when the plant is actually um, actively growing. Mm -hmm. So besides air layering, another, another way that you can propagate your rubber plant is you could, you could make individual, individual node cuttings. And so you can you know, prune off a, a section of your plant and then wherever, wherever the leaf meets, meets your, your branch, just trim it off on either end you know, leave maybe, you know, I don't know, half an inch on either side. So you're basically left with a leaf and then part of the stem, which is where, where you know, where, where the node is. And then at that point, you can either, I don't know if you're a water propagator or a soil propagator, you can do either one and you stick it in soil until it starts to grow roots. Um, or you could just put it directly into potting mix and it'll, it'll grow a new plant. I have one cup of water next to my weird mad botanist table that I have next to my desk. And right now it has a philodendron pink princess tip cutting, a nice. monstera peru, and like three raffidora tetrasperma cuttings. I just like have an, <laughs> have an ongoing cup of water and like throw cuttings in all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, okay. Next question. Why are my new leaves on my plant smaller than the older ones? That's, that's a, also a very common question that I get. And, you know, it's happened, it's happened on mine too. And actually there's at the tip of what, of my really big rubber plant, there's a leaf that's probably an inch long. Well, what, what happened there? <laughs> um, so I would say if you're, if you just brought your plant home, let's say from, from a nursery and you've experienced that, I think th th there's a number of reasons why, why that can happen. Number one, you know, our conditions at home are, are nothing like ideal conditions from the greenhouses that these plants were grown in. Mm -hmm. And so that, that in and of itself could be, could be a cause. Uh, poor light, poor lighting is, is another cause as well. And also your soil moisture. So just poor conditions overall, if you're letting your, your plant dry out too much, as it's developing new leaves, that can also affect the size of the leaves as well. So inconsistent conditions um, while, while new leaves are growing can, can be an issue for your plant, whether, whether it's dealing with light, with your potting mix, moisture, or both. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. What about dropping leaves, those beautiful, precious, large leaves? It's so sad when they drop to the ground. <laughs> It is, and, and that's a huge one. That also can be caused by several different factors. It often happens when you first bring your rubber plant home. And with, as, as with a lot of ficus species, they don't like to be moved, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's one reason they can drop. 
Another reason they can drop off is if, if your plant, if you, if you bring your plant home and you shove it in a dark corner, that you will get leaves dropping off. It, mm -hmm. It's just going to happen. And that's a very common, that's a very common issue because your plant is not going to be able to support all the leaves that it, it had when it was growing in good conditions. Mm -hmm. And so the plant's basically shedding some leaves um, at, at that point to compensate for the lower light. Um, you can also get leaf drop too from, from your soil drying out too much for too long as, as well. Or if you have a combination of all of the above. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, one thing also that also comes to mind is, I don't, I don't know why, why this is the case, but, uh, and maybe you've seen this when you're buying plants in, in a nursery. A lot of times I've noticed rubber plants that, you know, in, in larger containers, you know, maybe gallon size containers, and they're horribly root bound. Mm -hmm. They're horribly root bound. You touch the top, uh, you touch the surface and it's all roots. Mm -hmm. And so in that case too, if your plant is horribly root bound, you're not going to be able to keep the roots hydrated enough. You're not going to, it's going to be very hard to keep up with the watering. Mm -hmm. And so that coupled with, if you have a fear of overwatering, or I, I call it overwatering, and that's actually, that's actually a trigger word for me. Um, <laughs> I, I, have, I haven't told you this yet. It's a trigger word. And I, I have a section in my book dedicated to the word overwatering because um, it, I, it leads to so many misconceptions and it leads to a fear of watering properly. Mm -hmm. So if, if your plant is horribly root bound, it's going to be really difficult to keep it hydrated. And so you, you really need to put it in a bigger pot at that point, because mm -hmm. otherwise you're going to be, you're going to be kind of going around in circles, trying to, trying to keep it watered enough. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that can also lead to, to leaf drop as well, um, due, due to the soil moisture issue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. It's a trigger word for you. I, I get that though. Cause people really have so much fear around watering and am I doing it right? And is this wrong? Or I think plant parents can be so hard on themselves. Absolutely. If, you're, if your plant's doing good, you're probably fine. And even right. if you kill a plant, that's okay. It's okay. It's all a learning Live opportunity. And learn. Live, Live and, and learn. Live and learn. Yeah, totally. And with, with overwatering, if I can just interject one more thing, mm -hmm. the reason the reason it causes issues is because people get so scared to water properly that oftentimes they go too far mm -hmm. in the other direction. And, you know, they might even measure out, you know, for their succulent, a tablespoon of water, but then you're going to end up dehydrating your roots. Yeah. So you're not thoroughly watering. All your roots are not, well, what I like to say is, do you care about all of your roots or just some of them? Yeah. Right? <laughs> all great. of your roots, all of your roots need enough water, but it's, you need to also consider other factors as well. If your soil's not drying out enough, then you, you have to look at some of your other factors. And that I talk about that a lot in my book. Yeah, no, totally. Agreed. Agreed. What about my plant looks healthy, but the branches are all over the place. Why is this happening? Yeah. So rubber plants. Uh, so I actually tied up my rubber plant the other day because it was, it was kind of going, going all over the place as well. What we have to remember indoors, so indoors we don't have the benefit of wind, right? Mm -hmm. And so that actually, wind will actually strengthen plants outside. And so we, we don't have air circulation indoors, we don't have wind, and so it's not gonna reinforce our plants, mm -hmm. and that's okay. It's okay to tie up your plant. So I, I have a bamboo stake that I shoved literally right through, right through the root ball, and I gently tied the branches that were creeping over. And actually one time, I remember, I think it was um, last year, you know, we had a couple of friends over for, for, for dinner and I, I hadn't realized how far over my rubber plant had crept over the couch. And one of my friends was kind of, you know, going like, like this, <laughs> sitting next over. to it. <laughs> oh, no, I can't, this rubber plant's attacking me here. Um, and so there's nothing wrong with staking up your plants. Mm -hmm. Preach. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what about tiny white spots on my plant's leaves? So that's, that's an interesting one. There, there is nothing, there's nothing wrong. If you notice those, those little tiny spots, they're tiny little 
white spots and often you'll see them around the perimeter of, of your leaf. And after, after, dig, you know, after getting this question, I, I researched it and investigated it. And apparently the little tiny white dots are called lithocysts and they're cells that contain calcium carbonate. Um, and they don't do anything. They don't, they're, they're nothing to be worried about. They don't do any harm for, for your plants. I don't know what their purpose is, mm -hmm. but it won't do any harm for, for your plants if you see those. So Interesting. Yeah. No that worries. makes me think of too, like, depending on what you're watering your plants with, sometimes those uh, minerals will show up in the plant leaves and you can just wipe them off. Yeah. And maybe, maybe, you know, with the fertilizer that you're using or maybe mm -hmm. calcium from, from tap water, I use tap water for almost all my plants. Yeah. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Totally. What about two more questions and then we yeah. can wrap. Um, okay. What about if I have a variegated rubber plant that has browning, excuse me, hiccup, browning edges? Yeah, so, so that's another common, common issue. And I would say in those cases, it's probably due to your soil moisture being off. So either your soil went too dry or your plant stayed too wet. Some people will say, oh, it's due to, it's due to lighting. Maybe, you know, my plants and too, it's maybe getting too much light. But in my experience, I don't, I don't see that. And unless, unless I, I will bring in this, this caveat. Um, and I forgot to mention this when you asked about light. When, whenever you're increasing light for, for any plant, any plant, even if it's a sun loving plant, if you're moving a plant to a much higher position of light, whether it's a super sunny window or especially if you're moving a plant from inside to outside, you have to slowly acclimate your plant. Otherwise, your plant will burn within a matter of hours. Mm -hmm. And so that goes even for sun loving plants. Your plant has to acclimate to higher light. So that, that even goes if you buy a plant from, you know, in the mail and it's spent time in a dark box. You can't just shove it into full sun right away. It's going to burn. Yeah. And same thing goes, same thing goes moving a plant from indoors to outdoors. You have to do it really slowly and to put it in full shade at first and gradually increase the light. So in that case, then yes, that, that could be causing the browning, but typically for variegated plants, they are not as forgiving as their non variegated counterparts. So try to avoid your potting mix from going completely dry. Or on the other end, you know, don't let it sit in water for, for, for too long because they're more sensitive to, to those factors. Yeah, I also feel like this is a great time for us to just kind of insert a disclaimer as well of so many of these troubleshooting things can mean so many different things for people because yes. you talk about brown edges. Just like you said, it could be a water thing. It could be a humidity thing. Maybe your plant's yes. next to the radiator and it's getting super yes. dry heat. It could yes. be um, fungal. It could be, it could be so many things. So this so is what things. you're generally seeing. It's not a once, you know, a catch all for everything, but these are generalized answers to, to, you know, 90% of 90% of plant situations. This will be the answer to, but yes. know that you might be, you know, the 10% that, that it varies. So Absolutely. it's all about experimentation. Do, <laughs>